Ezekiel chapter number 12. The word of the Lord also came unto me, saying, Son of man, thou dwellest in the midst of a rebellious house, the Jews. What God says about his own people, which have eyes to see and see not. That's a little bit of a conflict there. They have ears to hear, and they hear not. And that's something that Jesus would say all through his ministry. For they are a rebellious house. And what God is telling them, what Jesus tells them, they listen. You're looking with your eyes, but you don't see me. You're hearing, but you're not listening to what God has to say. You've seen the destruction of Jerusalem. You have heard the battle. You've heard Jeremiah. You're listening to Ezekiel. But you still think everything's going to be hunky-dory. Therefore thou, son of man, prepare thy stuff for removing. Get your stuff back. And remove by day in their sight. And thou shalt remove from thy place to another place in their sight. You're going to move. It may be they will consider, though they be a rebellious house. Uh, God's telling Ezekiel, pack everything up. Then thou shalt bring forth thy stuff by day in their sight. Well, he must have not very much stuff if he can carry it all. We Americans, we need a U-Haul, a pickup truck. Ezekiel has everything that can fit on his back. As stuff for removing. And thou shalt go forth at even night in their sight as they go forth into captivity. So Ezekiel is going to be a sign. Dig through the wall in their sight and carry out thereby. And Ezekiel is doing a lot of digging. He did dig in a wall and he found a door. Now he's going to dig through the wall to escape. Dig through the wall in their sight and carry out thereby. In their sight shalt thou bear it upon thy shoulder. And carry it forth in the twilight. Thou shalt cover thy face. Thou shalt not Thou shalt see not the ground. For I have set thee for a sign. Jews require a sign. Under the house of Israel. So what Ezekiel is doing during the day. God says blindfold yourself. Cover your head. Because when we read in Jeremiah. When the kings finally take off. It's, it's in the middle of the night. And we are at a time that there's no street lights. There's no... Uh, battery or electricity lights and if it's a not a full moon or even it was a full moon but it was cloudy or covered there was not much to be seen and what you do is you got to put yourself in age before uh, the imitation lights that we have today and when you took a walk out in an area like this in the middle of the night if there was no moon all right, you might be able to see some fire. You might be able to see some, uh, maybe a candle very close to it. Other than that, you're not going to see nothing. You're going to be blinded. And that's what, it's going to be so late when this enemy comes, you're going to go through the wall, you're going to do it in the dark, and you're going to run blinded. And I did so as I, as, and I did so uh, as I was commanded. I brought forth my stuff by day. So they can see it as stuff for captivity. So everything he had was for captivity. In other words, all right, he may have had more. You may have a lot, but when the, when the army comes, you're going to grab what you can and you're going to run. Most of it will be left behind. Think about it. Let's say you saw troops right now coming down the street and they were not American troops. And you see people running. What would you grab that you could grab and get out on a run? And that's what Ezekiel. He didn't take everything. He took what he could quickly. And in the evening I dig through the wall with my hand. I brought it forth in the twilight. I buried it upon my shoulders in their sight. And in the morning came this word of the Lord unto me saying, Son of man. Has not the house of Israel, the rebellious house? Isn't, that what, isn't God great when he talks about his own people? You know what he says about the Laodicean church age? 
Read it, Revelation 3. God is God doesn't gloss over anything. He tells the truth. And unto thee, what doest thou? Say thou unto them, thus saith the Lord, This burden concerning the prince in Jerusalem, and all the house of Israel that are among them, back in Jerusalem, the city stood there, the royalty stood there, the temple stood there, the wall is still up. It hasn't been sacked the third time yet. It hasn't been utter destruction yet. Say I say I am your sign, like as I have done, so shall it be done unto them. Back in, back home in Jerusalem. They shall remove and go into captivity. So when the people the third captivity, the third time that Babylon comes in, and they tell what happened, they should remember what happened to Ezekiel in chapter twelve. And we saw the king in the middle of the night and we just barely saw him and his guys running. And then we saw a whole bunch of torches and flames coming. Like the night when Judas brought the, the soldiers to Jesus Christ in the garden, it's pitch dark. They had lanterns. They had torches. That's the only light they had back then. And as much as as the king got away from, from the city of Jerusalem, they see all these torches coming. Here comes the enemy. As it was in Jesus in the garden, here comes all these torches. They didn't have headlights. Very dark. Say unto them, I am your sign. Like as I have done, so shall it be done unto them. They shall remove and go into captivity. The prince that is among them shall bear upon his soldiers, soldiers in the twilight and shall go forth. They shall dig through the wall to carry out thereby. He shall cover his face. He shall not see the ground with his eyes. So he's going to take what he can. He's going to go through the wall. He's going to get away. Try to get away. My net also will I spread upon him. Not going to get away too far. He shall be taken in my snare. And the king is. And I will bring him to Babylon to the land of the Chaldeans. And he is. Yet shall he not see it. Though he shall die there. And remember what happens. He's brought to the king. His sons are killed. And then his eyes are put out. Then he's brought to, to uh, Babylon. I will scatter toward every wind. All that are with him. To help him. Everyone that, All the Jews that are with him. All his royalty, all of his servants, all of them, they're going to go wherever the wind goes. And all his bands, his army, I will draw out the sword after them. And they shall know that I am the Lord. That's a powerful story. They shall know that I am. You know what? When I preach to you on the streets, if you hear this message, when, when a Christian comes to your door and knocks on your door and tells you about Jesus Christ, when that co-worker tries to open up a Bible with you and tell you about Jesus Christ, you better know at that time, know that I am the Lord, rather than what your judgment will come. When you stand at the great white throne judgment, and then you'll know I am the Lord. That's too late. You want to know that I am the Lord before the judgment. You want to know that I am the Lord under grace and mercy of the Lord. You don't want to know that I am the Lord after God has judged you. That's too late. And you can never say that because if a Christian already knows of the Lord, he knows about the Lord Jesus Christ, he knows about Calvary, he knows about the gospel, he knows about God the Father and the Holy Spirit. This is someone that's lost. And today I, I tell you, know the Lord as your Savior before you know him as your judge. When I shall, when I shall scatter them among the nations and disperse, disperse them in the country. But I will leave a few men of them for the sword, for the famine, and for the pestilence. That's the three things that Jeremiah keeps free. There's going to be some left that are going to die. And the famine and the pestilence, we see that in the book of Lamentations. That they may declare all their abominations among the heathen, where they come, they shall know that I am the Lord. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, 
Son of man, eat thy bread with quaking, and drink thy water with trembling and with carefulness. And say unto the people of the land, Thus saith the Lord God of the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and of the land of Israel, they shall eat their bread with carefulness, and drink their water with astonishment, that her land may be desolate from all that there is all that is there. Remember, Jeremiah finished off the bread when he was in the prison. There was nothing left because of the violence of all them that dwell therein. When the army came in, man, they grabbed all the water could. They were thirsty. When the army came in, they grabbed all the food they could. That's a spoil. And the word of the Lord came unto me saying, Son of man, what is the proverb that ye have heard in the land of Israel saying, The days are prolonged and every vision faileth? Wow, that's a... I and mean, God's not going to do nothing to us. We're going to have live in prosperity. Tell them, there, therefore, thus saith the Lord God, I will make this proverb to cease, and they shall no more use it as a proverb in Israel. But say unto them, the days are at hand, and the effect of every vision. I'm going to bring everything Jeremiah told you. I am going to bring everything to Ezekiel. Don't you tell me that they're liars. Don't you tell me it's not going to happen. It's going to happen. I'm going to bring it more quickly. For there shall be no more any vain vision nor flattering div divination within the house of Israel. False prophecy. That's it. It's coming to an end. It's going down. The hammer's going down upon the nail. For I am the Lord. I will speak, and the word that I shall speak shall come to pass. Jerusalem and the inhabitants thereof are in trouble. It shall be no more prolonged. God's done with his uh, long suffering. God hangs up his long suffering and puts the robe on as judge. Stands up, takes his gavel, and slams it down, and says, Guilty. Then he puts his long suffering back on, and says, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Shadrach, Meshach, and we'll go through the whole list there again. Your spirit. Don't you tell me God's unrighteous. God's a mean God. Hey, you better believe, you know what? He could have wiped the entire nation out, and that would have been it. And God would have been righteous. Yeah, but his word is true. For in your days, O rebellious house, will I say the word, and will perform it, saith the Lord God. God also promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, their seed shall be as the numbers of the heavens, of the stars, and of the sea, sand of the sea, and an everlasting covenant he promised unto David. You know what protected Israel? You know what protected Ezekiel? You know what protected Jeremiah? You know why you have lamentations written by a Jew after the judgment? You know why Daniel? Do you know why Nehemiah, Ezra, Esther, Mordecai? Do you know why you read about Jews, Peter, James, John? You know why? Because of God's word to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, David. The covenant that God spoke to them, that is why there are still Jews today. He spoke no covenant of Americans. He spoke no covenant of Germans. He spoke no covenant of the Chinese. He spoke the covenant to the Jews, to Abraham's his descendants, to Isaac's children, to Jacob's grandchildren, to the twelve tribes. Nothing of Ishmael. Yes, because they... The, Abraham did what God told him to do. And there was a friendship between them. That's why there's a red man. They're God's people. You better leave them alone. He protects them. Even in his anger, he protects them. They're his children. He loves them. Again, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, behold, they of the house of Israel say, the vision that he sees is for many days to come. And he prophesies of the times that are far ain't going to happen during our time. 
Ezekiel goes into captivity. And while Ezekiel is still alive, the entire land is sacked, destroyed. The temple is demolished. It does happen in their time. You think they weren't think they were quite shocked? Therefore say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, they shall none of my words be prolonged any more. But the word which I have spoken shall be done, saith the Lord God. Now we're waiting for those words for the Lord to speak when it comes to the rapture. You know what? Come to the pass, my long suffering has given up on those people. That church has gone so rotten, makes me so much sick. My words, I'm going to fulfill my words. Archangel, sound that trump. Let's go. I've had it. No more mercy, no more grace. Satan, as soon as that last Christian is in the clouds and before my son, go at it. I'm not saying that's, we don't know when the tribulation period is going to start after the, after the rapture. We have no, we know it's seven years. But there's coming a day when God's word, it says, will be prolonged no more. Be one day he's going to call us Christians home. That's his word, isn't it? Hasn't he spoken to us? That's what we're waiting for. And we're not waiting for destruction. We're waiting for glorification. God's going to put this flesh down one day and give me a new body. That's great. That's mercy. That's wonderful. And for the Jew, they're going to have the seven years of tribulation, three and a half years of great tribulation. And then the Lord Jesus Christ will saddle up. Go get them. They've had enough. The seven years is up. My words will accomplish. Right up, mount up, go get them, son. And do what you need to do. Well, see, right now it's under sin. It's a, it's a judgment. It's destruction. It's, it's, it's chaos. It's mayhem. Because they've sinned against God. But God's a righteous God. But you got you got to realize one thing. If it's prophecy in the Bible, it's going to happen. It will happen. And when we tell you, if you do not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and that you'll go to hell, no matter how much you air condition it, no matter how much you don't like it, no, more, no matter how much you do not want to listen, if the Bible says that Jesus will say, depart from me, I never knew you, you workers of iniquity, you're going to depart from Jesus. And you're going to be cast off in the lake of fire where death and hell are cast into. You will have eternal damnation. That's what the Bible says. That is the word of God. And the Bible says just as much as for the Christian, if you don't do anything for the Lord, you, you don't earn no gold, silver, precious stones, you're going to walk through New Jerusalem in eternity with no crowns on your head. You won't be able to sing to him, wear a crown. Okay. Be alert that God is God. Prepare to meet thy God. And what he says, he says.